Hey guys, it's Jordan Wisely here on the Zach Nichols podcast and tune in because we talk all things challenge. Welcome back to the Zach Nichols podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Zach Nichols. No, it's Cowboy Zach today. <laughs> and we have, some may say, our one of the most toted guests of all time. We have a legend on the, on the couch. Without question, the most anticipated guest in ZNP history, Mr. Jordan Wisely. Yo, thank you guys so much. It's like, I would say today you are Deputy Zach. Because <laughs> Deputy Zach. Sheriff is in town, mate. That's Sheriff is true. In town. Yeah. That is true. And uh, we all got tickets to the gun show. For those of you that got tickets to the gun show, which will be airing tomorrow, you guys are going to hear this in the future. We're going to have a good time tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, man. going to be good. I'm the, I'm really bus. I'm really decided about that. About that line. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, you and I always have a really good, like, our I, a lot of, i guess you know people don't get to see so much so much on tv not of have our a relationship good time yeah we have a, lots of laughs the bros are the bros well we see. we take the piss out of everything as the brits would say yeah like yeah. we <laughs> brag on everything everyone ourselves like it's it's good like especially war of the worlds too like our morning walks and jogs yep you know like yeah. oh man, we have a good time. So yeah, I'm I'm excited about the 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 live show. Yeah, I'm kind of rant. I was actually like this. The live show was more of like this is Pierre's like baby. Like, you could call us. Yeah, thing. yeah. And I was I'm more of like I don't know. Like are people like what if no one shows up? Like what if no one wants to end? He was like, dude, Jordan said he'd do it. I'm like, oh cool. He's like, dude, Laurel's in too. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> this yeah. is like one hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. it was less. It was like 15 minutes. I'm like. Cause I was like, we were like putting the feelers. I'm like, I don't know, like if that's my thing. And I'm like, all right, cool, let's roll with it. But that is true. And people always ask about our like whatever it was. And do you remember how it started? Our like that was my first question. What is the first thing you remember about me, Zach? Well, I remember. So we actually did what was that? Rivals two, two was our first season together. Yep. And uh, like we were okay, I, we were kind of we we would have we would connect in in, in like bro locker room ways you know and like talk about sports and stuff but then we were definitely in, jockeying for position in the game yes in competition it was we were very much like at each other you know and at that point you had had one and you had, had not had any and just first you're trying one. to yeah, yeah. that was and, my first one right his second one but he was raining and yeah, yeah. he's raining at the time and let me tell you something though like my thing with you was like i'm like all right here's this fresh face kid and that was me so i was trying to be very patient but like i think you came right from filming real world portland oh, dude right like you were our, our real world hadn't even started airing yet yeah and, and we oh shit and and they called Mar yeah and so you're talking about a matter of months month or two months something like that maybe two weeks months. Wow. two months two months think, okay yeah. so think about like the real world would be like after your freshman year of college mm -hmm. so like you don't really like train that hard because you can't so like jordan i think came in like what he felt was like everyone else that joins the challenge who's a good athlete and is like oh, dude these guys are chumps yes that was my thought going in too. Also, my only I didn't watch the challenge. However, the challenge is iconic. I had always saw seen it on my brother and I and being athletes, we would walk by the TV and see it on, just catch a clip and be like, huh, oh, we would smoke them. Yeah. So he definitely had that, but I think he quickly learned like when he saw us working out, like, holy shit, like these people are actually kind of strong. Like yeah. they can put some weight. And then it was like, but like you saw this like thing switch in your head where like you were like, I need to outwork everyone. Mm -hmm. So Jordan was the guy waking up for everyone on that show, and you would hear the weights clanging. And then you, you'd he'd you'd, he'd eat breakfast with everyone, but then he'd go out and he'd he'd start running, and then he'd wait and he'd watch who's gonna work out first, and then he'd be like, Hey, let me jump in. You would probably work out. I'm not, and this is not an exaggeration. There was probably I was only there for like three weeks, probably. I think I did like six challenges. So that's like three weeks. You were probably working out seven to eight hours of the day. Oh yeah easily yeah. is that legit yeah legitimately yeah, yeah. like well, and and i was coming off of so I, I was just a runner like you know all through high school sports was lifting and everything then went to college got hurt and then went to college and just did the student athlete thing and i just ate i got i got like out of shape you know you're I just, still in great shape well, you moved well, well but then i got in shit like i did the real world and i started running I, I literally just started running and i was running like you know a shit ton i was and i was i i will always have the athlete base but i was just running and so i was just kind of like a skinny 
you know, like skinny in shape. But yeah. I get there and these guys are monsters. Yeah. And like CrossFit was big. So we were all doing like wads together and shit. And like the weight differences on like Zach and CTs and everyone's born. And I'm just like, good. God, and and right. at the time, you're talking about a very physical challenge. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. A and very so physical that, challenge. Yeah, I was like, I mean, I was naive enough to think that, like, oh, if I start working out now on the job, oh, yeah, I could, like, grow now. <laughs> but it was just, like, I've, you know, had to start doing something. I couldn't just be, like, jogging around the place. Yeah. Like, that switch flipped for you immediately as soon as you got yeah. into well, the house. And then the, the challenge has started, right? And, like, I think me and Trey came out, and, like, we won, like, the first two for the guys. And so, mm -hmm. like, I was definitely puffing my chest. And, but, like, then it started, like, where it was, like, me... See, it was my team, CT, your team, and uh, Johnny and Frank. Yep. Those were the clear tops. And, like, me and Jordan didn't have the connections with the girls like CT and Johnny did. So we were pretty much jockeying that whole season without really – we never butt heads. You never butt heads with me on that season because no. I was gone before we could have even had beef. Actually, we probably would have ended up in an elimination around against each other before we even had any issue. But for me, he like, when we came back for free agents – was when I I remember approaching you and just being like, moving forward, you have to have someone that you know is not going to come for you. And I said to him, from what I remember, I remember being like, I'll never say your name. I'll never come for you. That being said, I was like, I'm not going to make every move you want. And yeah. I was like, and I don't expect you to do that for me either, but I do expect you to know that you're never going to say my name. I'm never going to say, you know, we'll keep that, that. And that almost like set the foundation for the rest of my career. Cause like the people that I worked with very closely, it was that it was like, you make what moves you got to make for you and I'll make moves I got to make for me, but just know it's not, I'm not going to ever say your name, but I'm not going to sit here and protect your whole Alliance and like let mine, whatever. So yep. tell me was, how you remember that. No, that's we, we literally had a conversation cause this was free agents was what, well, you know, we, you know, free agents was a game that, we didn't have we we got really lucky on rivals too that it was like girls controlled the vote and guys controlled the vote because if it would have just been all over salt the guys would have swayed the vet guys would have swayed them and we would have been gone pretty quick mm -hmm. um and then in on free agents we're like by ourselves like everyone could vote everyone so we really had to like actually find people that you could like trust mm -hmm. you know and we both knew that competitively we could gain power there's a high chance that we could gain power keep each other safe but we were both very like realistic in our expectations of like what uh, an alliance member does and we would we would sit around and like talk crap and like hear stories of how everyone used to be and have have these like years long vendettas against somebody because they yeah. like voted for a friend or whatever when, when it was like going to the last one and i was just like damn that sucks we're gamesmen we just game you yeah. know and we always you know just really associated everything in like a sports sense and so once that was kind of set that's like hey we're not going to come for each other but like frolic as you see right yeah. and like, like, i'm like, not gonna tell you yeah to go you, after can, you can hang yourself if you want but right. like i'm yeah. like i won't say your name you know exactly what We've been seeing uh, in recent uh, seasons just alliances kind of take over and just what it does in terms of the group mob mentality. But I think a lot of the fans, it doesn't resonate because you come from eras like yours where it's like, yeah, I was cool with like two people and like we rode what we had till till the end. So um, it's almost like a it's very that that like that approach to like the alliance is almost like a CT approach. Like that's kind of how CT is with me. At least it was always like, dude. We're, we don't want to end up against each other, so let's work with each other enough to stay out. But, like, CT was never going to – like, I could never go to CT and be like, hey, don't do this because of so-and-so. Like, yeah. it had to be something in it for him, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But like He's with, the master of – But with Johnny, Johnny's very much so, like, as long as I'm protected, let's get the mob mentality going. Yeah. You know? So as, long as, as, for. as long as he's the leader of yeah. the mob, he – like, that is – Right. Yeah. Johnny, yeah. if you saw how it was with, with Josh, it was like, Johnny's the goose, and what's good for the goose is good for the gander, but it's not always – that's not always the, the way. Like, for example, in War of the Worlds 2, had Laurel beat Ninja, oh. I had – which technically she should have, but had Laurel, had Laurel beat Ninja – you and me, our roles in that game reverse because Johnny will always have Jordan before me, especially after what happened on War of the Worlds 1, and I know that, and I would never fault Jordan for that. But, like, because in that same sense, I'm thinking, well, 
that's why, like, before the game started, I had a conversation with Paulie and was like, listen, like, I don't care what you do this game, but I'm not going to go for you. Just leave me alone. And that's honestly what spared me from getting how you were treated. Mm -hmm. Because Carl wanted to go for me after before Josh after you, but Paulie was like, no, we actually need him to win. We needed you to win, too. But, on like, remember, we had a conversation where we were both like, should one of us throw each other? Like, should I go in to go to the Brits? And you're like, no, I'm going to do it. Right. And he's like, you're like, they're going to throw me and let me do it. And then me and him sat down with Rogan and CT, and we were like, hey, if I throw myself in to try to go against whoever, can and I promise that I switch to the Brits, will you do that? And Rogan looked us dead in the eye and was like, I'm gonna be honest with you. If you one of you, if you, Zach, if you choose to do that, you're going against Jordan. Yeah. And so at that point, yeah. I was like, do we both just run the final against each other and like may the best man win? Because I'm not gonna what good was that do like the whole point was run the final with you rather than go in because the, they would have for sure been like oh you want to play tough you want to be a tough guy is that because everyone's always like why didn't you do anything i'm like we really our hands are all tied we had zero oh, control it, it is wild i know i wish yeah i wish they would like show how this stuff it like because we had a conversation like should i do it and rogan deadass was like as much as i would love you on our team he's like I'd throw you in against Jordan when you would go home. Because they were so, it was wild. The, the they wouldn't UK break. They played, so, and, and, and it was, they wouldn't break from this scared mentality of like, well, that takes away a spot that us and our friends would have, and we don't want that. It did not matter if it meant that they were up against the losing, for both sides, and this is what was wild, is both sides were willing to take a losing team like knowing that they would like the odds would completely change and they were cool with it because it left more spots like for mm -hmm. them and their friends and we're like all right um i'm so glad you brought this season up because i actually just saw uh like a clip posted from like the challenges doing this thing like, like home turf or, mm -hmm. or something like that yeah and it showed Kara talking about this dude I actually, when I when I saw that, and I don't want people to think the thing. I have no beef with car. Like we, we, this is not like a thing a thing on car. I'm just giving my perspective of it and, and my opinion of watching that clip where she's talking about like I was right about what because in that clip I saw her say I think they're alluding to she was right about Tori and I. One, it was nothing. Tori and I was fake like at all. No. Like so that like I don't know what you were right about there. Everything was legit there, and then. In the game, no one voted for her. Never once did we ever come for her. And we actually, after we all made a treaty, right? When we first got there, we made we a said, treaty every we week. Said, Team <laughs> USA. We said Team USA does not go against Team USA until all the Brits are gone, and then we'll play our own game. We go, yep, yeah, break. Wes made a deal with Joss and Rogan. We went after Wes. Wes went home. Okay. Then they got mad and did the whole Laurel thing. Now, the way that the, they had power to do the Laurel thing is after the West thing, I told Cara and them, and we all tried to make this truce. We go, hey, we just wanted to get the one trader out, and now we're back to our truce, and, and we're not coming for you. We will prove this to you by giving Polly power. And what did we do? We voted Polly power. Again, remember bananas was so fucking yeah, bad they and everything. Shook hands, yeah. And we we literally they did the whole heat. We shook hands and we go, "Polly, we're going to get like to show you." That was for Polly and Kara's like mm -hmm. mind, you know what I mean, for their um security to be like, "Listen, I promise. Like this isn't like we're not trying to like come for you." We, I wanted West gone because he literally went and made a deal with the other team as soon as we said not to. I mean, so those deals, him. those deals West made were way beforehand, and West just thought that and he and he thought he could keep it going. Yeah, and <laughs> you and thing, Johnny were never gonna let him get away with that either. Like, no, let's be honest. No, no. Like, yeah, I was fading in the back kind of because here's the thing: is I had just had a ton of beef with Bananas and Leroy, mm -hmm. so I was like, listen, fellas, let's let them. I was doing the Homer Simpson there. Like, I needed. Yeah. Why do you think I came on that season with my head shaved? I plan on wearing a lot of helmets. <laughs> Like I thought I was going in a lot because like you gotta remember, like I threw I was supposed to throw an elimination round and didn't. And like Leroy had been kind of been like the Leroy had took like the blunt of like a lot of my game plays mm -hmm. because like I would play that like Leroy, I'm not gonna say your name, but I'm gonna set it up so that when we, we get to the end, it I'm won't so be it won't be my name that gets I'm gonna be so protected and you're gonna you're not. And that's kind of happened over and over until he finally was like he didn't like me, thought I was shady, but I'm like, am I shady? Because I've never said your name. I just set myself up for success. And mm -hmm. I learned that from Wes on X's too. 
Because remember what Buddy, West, oh my West gosh. did to me? Yeah. I had a perfect situation, and Wes just got the last word, convinced Leroy that I was working with Wes, which I literally just yesed the shit out of Wes so that I didn't have him coming for me. Because yep. I, you know, so like I learned that, like, you got to set up the thing, how you got to set yourself up for later. And Leroy got mad at that. So I went into War of the Worlds too, and I just remember being like, I know we're good, dude, but I just want to let you know, like, bananas and Leroy are not cool with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I was kind of letting that go. And then once Wes left, I'm like, okay, there goes one layer of my protection. And then Paulie and Bananas started feuding, and that's when Laurel confronted me. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Cause like I was playing the I was playing the fence, and, Laurel, and I yeah, said, fucking... "Me and yep. Laurel have this like, I'm I." Cause here's the thing: I know Laurel's got Jordan and bananas over me every single time, and I respect that. So I don't go out of my way to make a quick deal with Laurel because I know she's already got one and two locked. Yeah, and it would look disingenuous. Well, not just that, but like I'm just waiting. Laurel comes up to me, and I'm like, "She's like, this is who's voting for who. Whose side are you on? Are you on mine or are you on theirs?" And I was like, "Well, so right now she just listed off, listed off like Tori and Nani and Jordan." So I was like, "No, I'm I'm on, I'm on your side, Laurel." Yeah, <laughs> and I voted with them, and I did because it was easy for me to go after Ninja. Um, but like I'm worried this whole time because I'm like, shit's gonna hit the fan, and they're gonna everyone like these guys are too like Jordan's the only one that'll let me skate. Johnny, Laurel. Paulie and Carr are all going to make me pick a side. And it just so happened I never had to. Uh Because by the time it came time to be like, all right, do you do what's right or do you go against your friend in elimination round? And here's the thing. That by not going in, we both, that that made it so we both still had a chance to win money. Yeah. Because we were the last. That was the only thing that we were talking about. was like, dude, the only silver lining is like one of us is getting some. And it came down to that. So we were both the last person on our respective teams to finish that puzzle. So we both got that last locked in spot and had that happened. We're the last two, like only one of us gets that spot. So, I mean, had we, I mean, I, let's be honest. I don't know if I'm beating him in an elimination round, so I wouldn't have probably gone to the hospital and he still gets the money, but I, at least I got to run the final. <laughs> and I was, I was actually extremely proud of myself because I'm not a puzzle guy. I've never been like a huge puzzle mm-hmm. guy. And I was able to, after what we had been through, and then the whole night, I was able to come in and be like, no, you are you are a champ. You've been to several finals. Like, you got this. And I was proud of myself for beating Ashley and Cam. And, uh, the, and the, so these, like, puzzle yeah, queens. Yeah. Like, they thought, I think, like, because I, I was scared. I said, I'm like, dude. Like this, this is, and that puzzle wasn't the puzzle. You had to find the cuts in the wood. Yeah. But I just remember. That puzzle was so ridiculous. It was, yeah. it was super tough. It was like, it wasn't the actual, what was on the wood. You had to look at the actual cuts they made on it. Um, But yeah, that was, and so I gave myself a chance to win that. And I don't know if you remember this, but, and I got to give you this compliment because you obviously know what happened to me after that final. Yeah. But, and you also know that that season, I think that there was nobody there that outworked me. A hundred percent. And I think I proved myself on like when we were moving the blocks and like, I may not be the person who's going to win a 10 K, but I'm, if you give us all 40 pounds, I'm going to win that race. And, uh, I remember after the final, I knew you were celebrating and I was, I was seeing, I saw God. Oh yeah, he did. But I, well, one thing I said to you was, I was like, Hey, I just want you to know, I just gave you everything I have. <laughs> like I gave you months of training. It, was, it, it may not be the longest, you know, like it, a lot of people, they define like, like hardest by like longest, but conditions, the conditions the night of that, before. the, the everything. Oh God. Like, and dude, they didn't feed us. They gave us traveled, McDonald's. We, we traveled. Yep. We, we, they, we got McDonald's. We were on an airplane. We got on a, a, a airplane it, food. Yeah. Yeah. It was airplane. It literally, it was, and remember what those were wrapped sandwiches. They were literally yeah. just handmade wrap and they were saran wrap sandwiches and then like an apple or something. Yeah. And we landed, they gave us a water bottle and said, get ready to go. Yep. This and is then, like, and then they put us on those like military old, yes. like seventies things. And we rode in that uh-huh the whole fucking way there you know it was a couple hour drive there yeah. and then uh we get out and they're like all right this is where you're sleeping and they locked the tent they locked the tent so there was no airflow and it was like 100 degrees and i just remember like we all stripped down into our like underwear. we're all in our underwear and we're laying on tarps it's yeah. like everyone's pushed their their uh sleeping, bag. sleeping bags away and we're yeah. just bodies on the tarp yeah Trying to basically, you know how you always flip your pillow for the cold? We're yeah, just cool moving down. area to try and get cold area of time. Yeah. And then, and literally, we're just, we're all like on it, what felt like 15 minute shifts of going down, just like kind of looking up at everybody and going, like, not yet. Yeah. yeah. But what was even worse was in the morning, no breakfast. Nope. I don't even think they gave us any water and they locked us in the tent. 
and we're like just sitting here and it's getting the sun's coming up and we're in the jungle you can hear like the birds and it, everything's coming alive they're killing like you guys. hot in there and i remember i just sat right by the door and unzipped it and they were like zach close i'm like no no i'm like we all yeah we all we kind of like, fought no. on that and we and we just unzipped it and all we're sitting in our everyone's in their compressions yeah no one had girls compression yet. you know tops compression bottoms and we're all sitting down on like we had they gave us like stools or something yeah and we're just sitting as close as we can to the front so we're just getting some air in there and just like what i so like i said i told him like dude like i gave you everything and i wasn't kidding because then i went to the hospital and i had that it, you know i had for days seven days and i was on uh dialysis and i was on filtering my blood all this crap and then that actually then i had to take like almost two months where i couldn't even go for a walk my dogs so when i got done with that i just remember thinking like they cleared me for exercise, but I was like, everything was just so weak. And I just remember thinking like, I think they CT and Jordan retired me. <laughs> I don't know if I can come back and do another final because of how bad that hurt. But what really convinced me when I knew like, I don't know if I'll ever be back was what you did to Durrell on mm. All Stars. Like that to me. That was a tough one. Yeah, for him. I am mean, yeah. I, like, know it, I know it hurt you too, but like just no, to see. It, it was not, not even physically, like mentally the whole time I understood in my mind i was like you lost this one buddy make it a show to him yeah i no no, no. like i i in my mind i was like he's only he's got 10 percent to go to, like no shit like dude no shot you bring this back like especially because i had tried everything mechanically available to me and even pushed the rules of like i was trying to stick my toe out and like hook and try and like and get it to roll that way physics are physics right all right it doesn't matter whoever the heavier person was was going should have won that right. period it was solely due to the fact that he did not know how to put more of his weight on the side of the cylinder right use gravity but i i'm I, they can see, everyone can see us yeah i'm like someone's gonna tell him darrell you need to stretch out so in my mind i'm like it's just a matter of time before they tell him yeah but so that's I, why i was talking so much like fun smack the whole time because i'm like i gotta get my licks in now because no shot that i make anything of this as a competition and then if time just keeps ticking well it's funny that you see dude, it that way because put him dude. and i was like and i was like nobody's telling him <laughs> yeah to go long see I, it, yeah go ahead no i'm just saying like so i'm watching this and i'd like to sit here and say Darrell. You know, he's a little bit older, he lost step, but he hasn't. No, he has not. Yeah. He is so strong. And so, like, I'm watching this, like, you know, I'm doing my day job now. I'm watching this. Because after I got done, I'd watched every season, every episode of all this stuff. Wow. I've seen everything. <laughs> maybe a few, maybe a few really early ones. But I've even seen Real World. So, uh, I watched everything because I was like, I knew I was going to do this. And I wanted to have some knowledge. But I was watching that, and I'm like, you're definitely not able to do that anymore. Like, maybe if I would have figured it out. But I'm like, <laughs> dude, he just put Darrell on a stretcher. That's never been done, and it'll never be done again. And I was like, you might be a better commentator than a competitor at this point because it was like, what, for at least 45 minutes of you just... Oh, over an hour. You're in pain, too. That's We're a little, little over an hour. Yeah, that's what people oh, need yeah. to realize is, like, this is like a raging bull of a human trying to push against you, and you basically used locked out, and we're like, I can only do this for so long, and then you did it long enough that he couldn't walk. And there's no disrespect to him. I was like, I don't think the, I'm ready for that anymore. You know, like, mm. well, it's crazy that to you, it's just it's common sense. But I think your legacy and your the way that people think about you is that you make the impossible possible, right? Well, winning a tug of war with one hand and doing that type of stuff and, and winning a, a challenge like that. Winning a, a, a John Henry hammer swinging contest with one hand. Like, <laughs> you said it. Let's you not said protect it. the host here. Like, I, I, that, that is low key. Like, you know, a lot of people don't bring that up. You have to. To me, I, that felt like the one other than Josh, but uh, walking into that everyone was collectively like, See you, Jordan. That concludes the free preview of the Zach Nichols podcast. So go to Patreon and subscribe to see the rest of the shit that we talk. Go do it now.